Which type of push-ups do you do? The worm push-up? The downward dogger? The half repper? The head bobber? If your push-ups are, well, fuglier than you'd like, then it may be time to check your ego, break things down, and focus on regressing to progress. Sometimes little form deviations can creep in, and we don't even realize it. At times like this, it isn't just about doing more push-ups, because practicing in proper form or recruitment patterns only further ingrains the movements we want to correct. The question is, how do you change your form, get the correct muscles working, and build up to those picture-perfect push-ups from your toes. It isn't just about simply modifying the push-up. I call it skill work because we're working on specific push-up variations or training techniques to improve push-up skills. And in this video, I wanna go over each of these four skills and how you can implement them into your weekly training routine, as well as one of the most unsexy secrets to improving your push-ups so you can see great improvements over the next 30 days. Just remember with each of these training techniques, you may need to check your ego and modify further than you'd like to make sure you're feeling the correct muscles working and keeping that picture perfect form. And film yourself with your push-up practice. By filming, you allow yourself to see your movements to change your cues and movement patterns while staying super intentional and focused on what you feel working as you do the actual work. You also have a great way to track your progress as your form improves and you advance those push-up variations in the skill work you're doing. Now diving into the skill work. I've mentioned multiple times you may have to modify moves. That being said, so often we modify our push-ups off our knees or off an incline and find ourselves never really progressing. It feels like we're just getting stronger at the modification. And that's why I like to include eccentric focus push-up skill work first in one workout each and every week. Once you're warmed up, you'll wanna perform a few rounds of eccentric only or eccentric focus push-ups before then going into whatever other workout you had planned. Putting the skill work first allows you to do it when you're freshest and focused so you can be very intentional and controlled with the moves. This also allows you to more often do a harder variation than you could if you were fatigued. And specifically, you wanna use eccentric pushups because we're strongest in that eccentric portion of movements. This means we're able to often do a harder variation, even if just for the eccentric part of the exercise only, than we may be able to do for a full exercise. In pushups, the eccentric portion of the move is the lower down. Eccentric means the elongation or stretch of the prime mover muscle. In pushups, that's your pecs. So in the lower down of your pushups, you may find you do feel strongest. You may find you can lower down in a full push-up from your toes, but you can't seem to get back up. And we wanna use this to our advantage and help us practice and spend some time under tension with a harder variation of the move that we can yet fully control. Because if we only work on that modified variation, we'll never help ourselves truly progress forward. So if you can, choose a variation harder than you can perform for the full push-up and simply do the lower down only with proper form. Spend about five seconds on that slow and controlled descent, then simply reset at the top. This fully eccentric only option is great if you're really in between levels and can't maintain proper form on the way back up. If you're trying instead to build up that strength endurance a bit more to increase your rep number, or even in between variations where you can't yet do that next level with control, but your current incline or modification is just a bit too easy, you may find you can use eccentric focus pushups instead. With the eccentric focus variation, you'll press back up but you'll still use that slow five count lower down to really spend time under tension with the hardest variation you can control. Just make sure that the push back up to the top allows you to maintain proper form. This is great to even help you build up the number of reps you can do once you start to get that picture perfect form off the ground. To use eccentric push up work, try the set and rep range. Choose a variation you can do for no more than six reps. If you hit eight reps, you need to advance the variation. Complete two to four sets, resting about 90 seconds between sets. On the last set, do a drop set. Right after you finish your 68 reps, modify just enough that you can complete 68 reps more, with those making you hit true failure. The next skill I like to include is bottom up push up work because it addresses one of the hardest parts of the push up and complements the eccentric so well. This push up variation helps you build the strength to push back up while maintaining that straight line from your head to your heels. Because in that transition from lowering down to pushing back up, is where we often see the most deviations in form pop up and tension being lost. This skill though is the hardest to perform. Seems simple, but truly is deceptively challenging, so help yourself truly perform it well, modifying more than you think to start. You wanna set up at the bottom of the push-up, really focusing on engaging everything, even running through a setup checklist to make sure everything is engaged, 
because you're then gonna push up off the ground with everything moving together. You can't allow yourself to worm or your butt to go up in the air. You wanna have everything flexed and be pushing the ground away so you're almost feeling like your body is hovering off the ground before you officially lift. But this helps you learn to create and maintain tension throughout the movement and maintain full control while bracing your core. Even think about the exhale as you push up. And unlike the eccentric work, for this, you will need to start with a modified variation and even more of one than you usually use. To include bottoms up push-up work, you'll again want to do your skill practice at the start of your workout after your warm up. You'll focus on a variation you can do for about five reps and perform about four to six rounds, resting one to two minutes between rounds. Do not skip the rest so you can keep working at the hardest variation possible. Don't be afraid to even add in about 15 to 20 seconds of rest between reps at points to complete the five each round. Do fewer rounds if you find you'll have to modify further to complete more than four. Better to just do the most advanced variation you can for a few quality rounds. The third type of skill work I like to include is cluster sets, and it can help you improve your strength endurance and create a greater training volume while also using a harder variation of the push-up than you're really able to do for the same number of reps. Think about the variation of a push-up you can do right now for 10 reps. Now think about what variation you may be able to use if you were only to perform two reps. It's probably a bit more advanced, right? Cluster sets allow you to do 10 reps, but for the variation you would normally only use for two. With cluster sets, you'll set your total rep count for the set and divide those reps into mini sets of just two to three reps at a time with about 20 seconds of rest between mini sets before you rest longer between rounds after all reps are complete. You wanna choose a variation that really challenges you for just two to three reps. This helps you keep progressing the variation you can do while maintaining a greater training volume, so more reps at a harder level. This works because it helps your body adapt to the harder variation, not just get better at the modification, and builds that strength to control the movement. The short rest periods, in the most unscientific terms possible, basically trick your body into believing it can do 10 reps, with a version you can really only do two reps with, but this helps you build strength and control fast. To include this skill work, you'll wanna do a rep count of about eight reps per set and perform three to five sets. You should only be able to do two to three reps in a row of the push-up variation you use for the total eight reps. And even at the end, you may find you have to do some singles to get out all eight. Rest 10 to 20 seconds between mini sets and then 90 seconds between rounds. Better to rest longer though between sets over modifying as the whole point is to use that harder variation. Now the final skill work I like to include is push-up holds. Ever notice you sort of stick or fail at specific points in the push-up? Like you can't lower all the way down without flopping or you get stuck at the bottom or about halfway up? That's where push-up holds can help. You can hold right at your stick point to help yourself strengthen that position and learn to engage everything correctly where you usually stall. When we eliminate the movement, we can often focus better on what we feel working and even work on that mind-body connection to recruit muscles better. This helps us really perfect and tweak our form and build that stability. And holds are deceptively hard, building core and upper body strength. But you'll find that by setting at specific points in your push-up, you can even use a harder variation or more advanced variation than you can do to complete a full push-up. This can really help you keep progressing towards that first full one from your toes. It can also help you increase your reps by strengthening where you normally fail. So find the points you struggle with the most in your push-up and include timed holds at each of these spots really focusing on what you feel working and engaging those muscles harder. I'll often include push-up holds for 20 to 30 seconds for two to three rounds as even part of the activation work I'm doing or in an isometric recovery workout. Pairing them with even pull-up holds can be killer for the core and upper body. Now, the final tip I wanna give is the most unsexy of secrets and something you probably don't wanna hear, but it truly is often the missing component of all the push-up work we're doing. It's that prehab work that can and should be included in every warm-up. We often think, I'm weak, that's why I can't do more push-ups. And while improving our strength is key, I know a lot of people that are very strong, can bench a lot, and aren't good at push-ups. It isn't just upper body or even core strength that's needed. It's good scapular control and activation of so many muscles to work together from your head to your heels. This means doing that foam rolling, stretching, and activation to get things working correctly so you can move efficiently for the push-up. This prehab work will also help you avoid wrist or elbow or shoulder injuries, which are so common as people include more push-up work in their routines. So don't ignore the importance of that three-part prehab process in your warm-up so you can get the correct muscles working and avoid injury to keep working on those skills and building up. Make all of your focused skill work pay off by getting on that mobility and stability work. And as you add in that prehab work, make sure you're including all of these four skill sessions one time per week at the start of your workouts for the next four weeks.